Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and I'm here today again with special guest Dr. Jeanette Ramos, who is one of my awesome HemePath colleagues. Dr. Ramos, as many of you know, joined us here on the channel last year and did an amazing lecture on uh, non-neoplastic lymph nodes and how they stain. And since then, many people have asked for her to come back and teach more HemePath. And as you all know, I know very little about HemePath and I struggle with it. So um, I've asked Dr. Ramos to come here today and teach us about peripheral blood smears. And uh, hopefully I will learn something and all of you will as well. Um, Dr. Ramos, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, peripheral smears are sort of near and dear to my heart because when I was a post-sophomore fellow, this is when I was introduced to the heme world and uh, is what I did with my pathology mentor. Actually, when I continued on in years three and four in medical school, I think having a good understanding of peripheral smears is a good backbone uh, for getting in then into bone marrow aspirates and bone marrow okay. biopsies. So before you can actually evaluate the peripheral smear, the first thing you always do really with any specimen is check to make sure you have the correct patient name and specimen number. Right. And then you have to evaluate if the peripheral smear is satisfactory to review, and we'll talk about that in the next slide. The CBC has a plethora of information. And so knowing what the CBC can tell you can be very helpful in your evaluation. And that's complete blood count, right? Right. For anyone. We, we often forget sometimes and use a, a lot of abbreviations in medicine and forget at what level people know those abbreviations or not. And then, importantly, you need to know what the question your clinical colleagues are asking you. And so that's an also important for the clinical colleagues to tell us. For example, I had a peripheral smear once that came in with no information and I went looking into the note and the question was something I wouldn't normally address which is are there acanthocytes on the peripheral mm. smear and so that's important to know otherwise you may not get your question answered and then you can finally look at your smear under the microscope and write your interpretation so a good peripheral smear is has a film or where the, the film is with help the blood okay that goes two-thirds to three-fourths down the length of the slide. A smear that is too short is going to be problematic because it's going to be too thick. Mm. And especially if you're looking at Rouleau, in the thick part of the smear you have Rouleau-like artifact. So you won't be able to evaluate that. And of course that, you know, that's important for myeloma patients and such. So it's got to be spread just the right thickness and this is how you make sure that that's happened, huh? Right. Okay. The uh, film should have a slightly rounded edge without being a sharp bullet point. Okay. The lateral edges of the film should be visible, so it shouldn't have run off the slide, but it should go almost the entire width of the slide. And you should have a film that is smooth without interruptions or irregularities. And then this last one is a textbook thing that I really don't know exactly what they're talking about, but I put it in here for completeness, which is when you hold the slide up to the light, you should see a rainbow uh, appearance at the feathered edge. And it sounds really pretty, and I wish I really understood what they were saying, but uh, there, there are it many is. things like this in pathology where things are supposed to look a certain way, and in real life, uh, most of us mere mortals just shake our heads, right, and wonder, I don't get it, I don't see it. <laughs> right. So these are some examples of not good peripheral smears. Okay. So the one furthest on the left, uh, as you can see, definitely has an interruption hmm. right here. Uh, not quite sure exactly what happened there, but all of that then is, is gone. So the blood's missing it's there, It's missing right? there. Okay. This one is way too short and, and not wide enough. And we're not quite sure exactly why that was happening uh, because the tech that was doing this was actually a really good tech and she repeated it and the blood kept doing that multiple hmm. times. So it's also really important to talk to your techs and be like, hey, what happened here? Um, and see if there's an issue like that. We also had in, we've had issues where they were having trouble with the smears and the techs, you know, this blood is just really, really thick. Turned out the patient was hyperviscous. Oh. And it actually, you know, promoted more laboratory workup and then this is just poor staining yeah it's a very different color 
It's a very different color. I'm not sure what happened in the stainer, but that's also going to be suboptimal for interpretation. Great.